Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel for something a little bit different today. Um, I got some questions on how I make my thumbnails, so I thought I would show you um, a little tutorial on how I use paint.net to make my thumbnails. So, yeah, let's jump right in. So, first off, you're going to want to download paint.net, and the link will be in the description below. Then you just open up the program, and you can adjust it however you want. You can move the tools around or you can make it full screen and make it how you would like it. Next you need to open a background picture and I just chose what I used for my cover photo. You can also adjust that and zoom in and out like you see in the corner. Next you're going to want to open a screenshot of your sims posing. If you don't know how to pose there are plenty of tutorials like that on YouTube but um, Assuming that you do know how to pose your sims, all you do is you pick the screenshot. I place my sims in front of a white or green or blue background depending on what they're wearing. So it makes them pop out and it's easier for me to use the magic tool to cut out the white space. So for this tutorial, I'm going to pick a picture of Gavin and Ainsley and show you how I cut them out and put them um, in front. So here they are. And what I'm going to do is use the magic tool, magic wand. And all you do is you click that and you click on the white space. Now you may notice that her shirt is kind of covered. So right here you can select the tolerance and adjust it until it's only selecting the area that you want it to select. You basically just want it to select all of the wall and cut out the wall and leave their figures in the picture. So you see me here adjusting the tolerance until it's not um, selecting the bottom of her shirt and shorts. This is where you might want to use a different color wall because she's wearing white shorts. So after you select that, all you do is press the delete button on your keyboard. Now you want to select them by using the select square tool on the side and you click control C and then you go back to your background and you want to add a layer. You do this by clicking the button and then you have a new layer. So now you just press control V and there they are. And you can just adjust, click and drag, make them bigger, whatever you want, however you want to make it. Um, next you want to click control C again and add a new layer. And then after you do that, you click control V and paste them onto the new layer and you'll see they are right exactly on top of each other. This is super important. Do not move them. So you go to the layer that's underneath and you go to photo, then you go to glow, and then you adjust the radius and brightness and blah blah blah. And this is how you get the halo effect behind your sims. This is what a lot of people use in their thumbnails and you might have always wondered how they did this. So yeah, that's how you do that. And then if you want more glow, all you do is you repeat the steps and you control copy and put them in a new layer. And then go back in. There's also an option under effects to repeat the glow. So you see how they pop out like a lot now. And you know, sometimes like like I, the top of his hair, as I pointed out, uh, gets a little messed up. All you have to do is you have to adjust the um, settings and things like that until you get it the way you would like it. If you would like to add words to your picture, all you do, or what I do, is I go to urbanfonts.com and I click on the free fonts tab. After you do that, you type in the search bar what you would like your word to say. In this case, I'm typing subscribe because you should totally subscribe. <laughs> but anyways, and then you just kind of scroll through the fonts and see which one you would like. Um, I ended up going with this Harry Potter font down here because I thought it was kind of cool. So all you do is you click on it and then it'll give you like this preview and then you, you right click and click copy image. Then you go back to your picture and you add a new layer and then you control V to paste your image onto the new layer. Now you take your square select tool and you select the biggest subscribe, that's what I do, the biggest one, and then you control C, copy it. And then what I do, it just makes it faster as I go to a new layer, control paste the little section that I copied. Once I do that, I delete the old layer and all the big part is gone. Now right here, I was selected on the wrong layer, so make sure you are selected on the layer you want to work with. And then um, you can adjust the subscribe. So then I use the magic tool and I delete the white space. And be sure to get in between the letters. 
Now I'm going to select the subscribe word again and this is where I can move it wherever I want and I can adjust the size. You can move it like literally wherever. Um, if you want your words behind the people, you can. all you do is you click and drag the layers underneath each other and yeah, you just kind of put the word where you want. Now, I usually do the same glow effect on my words, so this is where I'm going to show you how you do that. Um, in just a moment. <laughs> After you do this, you might see like a little things that didn't get deleted. And you just go back and use the magic tool again and delete them. And what I end up doing is just selecting that piece right there that's messed up and deleting it. And if you're selected on the right layer, then it will delete only the parts of that layer. So it won't delete any more of the picture. So now this is where I'm going to show you how to do the glow part. Okay, so before I show you the glow thing, which I already showed you on The Sims, I'll show you how to dye your letters. So you select the paint bucket tool on the left, and you go to your little paint window, and you select the color you would like to dye them. And all you do is you click on the letters, and you dye them whatever color you want. At first, I go with white, but I decided I did not like that. So I end up changing it to pink right here. And all you do is you just click, and then you click on each letter while you're using the paint bucket tool, and it will dye the letters pink. Okay, you may see I have a few extra layers up there and they're just like blank layers where I was messing around and trying things. I will delete those in just a minute, but don't worry about those. They're just um, blank layers and unneeded, so I'm going to delete those. Okay, so now we have the subscribe selected, so we're just going to control copy and paste it onto a new layer like we did before. We're going to go to effects and then blurs and then or photo glow. And then we do the glow first, and that's, uh, you can change the radius and contrast and all that. I usually have mine all the way up, and I like it. So then I just repeat the steps a few times because I would like my words to stand out even more. And on this last step, I'm trying to see what I'm doing, but yeah, I repeat it a few times until it pops out to my liking, and that's what you can do too. So I have it, I'm satisfied with what it is now, and now I'm just playing around and trying to get you to subscribe. But I hope you like this video. If you have any questions, absolutely feel free to leave a comment or send me a message and I will help you out. This is how I create my thumbnails. Other people can do it different, but I hope I helped you in some way. And I know this is really fast, but yeah, I hope you guys have an awesome, fantastic day and I will see you in my next video. Bye!